This week on Crunchweek, we're talking about Facebook's new wacky commercial for home, Google Glasses released to developers, and the expansion of Google Fiber. Welcome to Crunch Week, where we talk about the week's most interesting stories. I'm Lena Rao. I'm Greg Comparic. And I'm Ryan Lawler. We had a big week in um, both Facebook Home and Googleville, but we're going to be talking about the wacky new Google commercial uh, that that uh, Zuck was in that was released by Facebook. I guess it was last weekend. You wrote about it on Saturday, right, Greg? Yeah. So. With the, the initial launch of Facebook Home at the event itself, they showed off this the, this commercial, you know, the first ever commercial for Facebook Home, and uh, it was interesting. The one with the guy on the plane. Yeah, it was, it was a guy on a plane. Uh, he sits down and he's going through Facebook Home, and the things from Facebook Home are popping up in his in his, in his world. And so he opens the, the the luggage compartment overhead, and there's half naked dude in there, and then you know people popping out of out of the just pe people everywhere, and a little kid with cake all over his face, and it was. Uh, it's interesting. Right. Uh, it was going for that whole, like, weird commercials are kind of like a hip thing now. You know, Skittles does them, and a couple other companies do them, and it helps them go viral, I guess. But uh, this was a little bit too surreal. Yeah. Uh, so Facebook on Saturday released, you know, a second at home commercial, and I think it kind of just nailed the, the right amount of weirdness. Uh, and if nothing else, it had a goat that was screaming in Zuckerberg's face, which made the entire commercial worth it. That was really kind of jarring, <laughs> I think. Yeah. What'd hey you guys, think, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm too busy on my Facebook phone <laughs> to pay attention to what you guys are doing. And that was the whole point of the commercial. And yeah. then, and I don't think, uh, I personally don't think that that's a good mes message, right? Yeah. Like, the whole idea is that Zuck is like giving a speech to, uh, to the troops and they're <laughs> There's this dude just like zoning out, <laughs> like looking at photos of his friends or whatever, not paying attention. Well, like, I have yeah. to think it's targeted at a certain audience too, right? Like, there's obviously a generation. I think of yeah. kids and you know people that have their phones around in school or you know that aren't really. They want to disconnect and they want to like be just. I guess looking through their Facebook home. I yeah. mean, it goes back to the whole maybe audience for the actual device and OS. I'm, I'm just saying, I don't think that the message Facebook should be sending <laughs> is that we are a distraction to real life, you know? <laughs> but they already are. Why fight it? Just, just go with it. OK. Well, <laughs> uh, we, it was a huge week in, uh, as I said, Googleville, because um, Google Glass, the company's you know, sort of very, very innovative and hyped up um, eyewear product. I don't even know how would you really describe it. Uh, computing, we wearable computing. Wearable, wearable computing product yeah. was released to developers, and the API was released as well. So we actually got our hands on one, well, which was pretty excited. Yes, yeah. well, yeah, he did. Um, and uh, Greg, I think you, you got to, to try yeah. it on. What'd you think? I wore them. It's, it's nice. Um, it's a little bit more limited. I think there's a little bit of disinformation out there about like people who haven't worn glass yet and what they think it can do. A lot of people, when they see it, they're like, oh, that's going to be great for augmented reality because it can lay over all this information over your view, when it can't. Uh, it's kind of more like, imagine being able to get iPhone notifications or like you know, Android notifications, but just in the corner of your eye. Like, it, right. it, it can't really layer on top of what you're saying. See, it's I more like this little corner of your view. It's annoying. So why would I want it in my, well, you know, my vision area? Yeah, the whole idea with wearable computing is to keep you from having to pull your phone out of your pocket. It's not to replace your phone. It's just so that, like, you know, when you get a text and it's in, it's in your pocket or your purse or wherever, you don't want to have to pull it out every single time, you know. But if it's on your, on your watch, you can just go like this. If it's on Google Glass, you can just completely ignore the person you're talking to and <laughs> stare off into space. What do, what do you think, Ryan? Well, I Did mean, you get I, your hands on it? I've, I I uh, have previously, previously looked at it. Mm -hmm. Someone from Google who probably shouldn't have let me play with it. <laughs> <Nice>. uh, <laughs> let me play with it at some point. Um, but uh, so, I mean, I agree with Greg. It's pretty limited right now. And, uh, you know, it's kind of cool, but at the same time, not really sure like what the practical applications will be. Yeah. Um, and given where the API is right now, yeah. I mean, Greg's also looked at the API. Yeah. Um, the API is a little bit limited, but it's it's the first run, both of the hardware and the API, and plus and. No one's really messed with it yet, and it's a whole new platform. So, like, what's more important is to get this thing out there and let people come up with their own crazy ideas. You know, then awesome stuff will come out of it. Right now, right. in this early stage, it's a little bit hard to judge it, just because only Google's really building for it, I have and to say, everything's at stage one. Just from wearing it, or, or just from from talking to Drew about how he's he's sort of been experimenting with it and wearing it, he said it was actually something that he needed to get used to to oh, have. Yeah, for it, sure, it's you know they're really pushing uh, maybe. Uh, 
an action, a, a way to look and, and, and have to interact with your devices in a new way, he said it wasn't something that automatically he felt comfortable with right yeah. away. No, it is. It, it's a really strange sensation. It's something you got to get used to. Uh, Google's been saying it takes about a week for you to really integrate it into your life. Uh, I think it might take me a little bit longer than that, yeah. um, especially because like, I feel like most people that get glass at first aren't going to be wanting to wear glass all the time. They're right. going to be wanting to wear, you know, when they're in the comfort of their home, maybe, or uh, in their office, not when they're on BART or just walking around. Because every maybe maybe they will wear it more because everyone will be staring at them. But everyone is going to be staring at the first people to wear glass. I, and go ahead, go I, ahead. I kind of, you know, I joked about this earlier. Is yeah. like. And the way that you look at it is kind of non-intuitive. You kind of like have to like stare up and to the right, yeah. right? And it's so so it's kind of weird. I, it kind of reminds me of like if you've seen The Jerk, like <laughs> the Steve Martin movie where he invents this like eyeglass handle to take your glasses. Optograph. <laughs> Optograph, right. And it makes everybody cross-eyed. <laughs> it's like this class action lawsuit. Like I really hope that doesn't happen to Google, but it would be <laughs> hilarious if it did, you know? Well, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Not talking about the jerk, but um, uh, I think it was Larry uh, on the earnings call. Google uh, released earnings yesterday. Was talking about um, you know how they're sort of going into this new direction in a lot of ways of new uh, technologies and things like that. And and what would you think about right. that, Ryan? Well, I, so and that's that's where Google Glass comes from. That's what you know the self-driving cars are all about. That's what Google Fiber is all about. You know, Larry basically just said, look. You know, uh, search is still our cash cow. The web is still our cash cow. But like, you know, we're not just going to rest on our laurels and just ride that out. We need to look for new, innovative technologies, and that's what you know a lot of these projects are about. I actually think it's refreshing. I mean, it it's is. really nice to see Google not. You know, I mean, Google Plus, like. Obviously, it was a little, you know, it had a lot of similarities to Twitter and Facebook, and and it wasn't really pushing the envelope when it came to innovation. But yeah. you know, you no one can disagree that Google Fiber or you know self-driving cars or you know Google yeah. Glass is not doing that. I, I feel like it's something that I would like to see more companies doing, just doing these, have, like having these entire divisions just d devoted to being crazy, just doing stuff right. that even if it fails, they don't care. They just want to try something cool. But at the same time, I feel like like we as press need to be a little bit more forgiving. Like say if the self driving cars, say if Google came out tomorrow and was like, we're canning self-driving cars because it just doesn't work. The press would go crazy over that. They'd be like, oh, you know, Google invested so much money and this is a failed project, when really they're just trying to do something cool. And it's like, for companies that are as big as Google, that's totally okay. We should be like encouraging that because that's where cool stuff comes from. Right, and like w in the case of Google Fiber, they just expanded to Austin, they announced this week. They're expanding to uh, Provo as well. And so it's just, it's kind of cool that they're actually going to be making this available. Um, from a fiber standpoint, though, you know that's a massive investment. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, what their actual tolerance is for taking fiber market to market. Because yeah. you know Verizon invested a huge amount of fiber, AT and T invested a huge amount of fiber, um, and you know they still haven't really made that money back. I'm not sure, like. You know, if Google is ready to build fiber everywhere, um, especially since it, the U.S. is so spread out that fiber just doesn't make sense um, unless you're willing to take a huge loss on it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, th I, I, the nice thing about them actually doing this, though, is you know they have the resources to to. They have more than enough cash, you know, um, in their coffers to be able to do make these sort of investments. And the fact that they're doing it, maybe it's something that, you know, they're not going to see the the benefits not for you know generations upon generations. It'll be a whole different, you know, management team and a whole different company by the time that, you know, maybe they'll see any sort of returns on it. And maybe that's how they think about it. I don't know. What do you think? Well, they're not making it any. It doesn't seem like returns are super important to them yeah. because. Uh, most of the people using it are going to get it for free for seven years. That's right. Uh, you know, they're giving away five megabit per second plans to everyone that's anywhere near their their fiber network for seven years. That's a lot of money. So it, it doesn't seem like they're too worried about getting their money back right away. It's just more about the goodwill, maybe. Maybe, yeah, Google. It's <laughs> it's more about knowing what people are searching for. Well, let's <laughs> let's be real the about this. The cynical one in the, the group. <laughs> the self-driving cars is more about people surfing to work, you know, instead <laughs> of having to pay attention to the road, you know. Well, um, that's a good place to end. Cynicism <laughs> and optimism. Um, thank you so much for joining us this week. <laughs>